Hello and welcome to the Bot Nirvana podcast where we dive into all things software automation. I am your host Nandan Mullakra. While I'm not podcasting, I write articles on nandan.info. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get right into it. Our guest today is Ashish Nangla. He is the CEO of OpenBots. OpenBots is an open source RPA and AI company. They provide a free and open source RPA toolkit. There are no bot licenses. You can download their tools and get started. They also have an academy where you can learn and get certified in open bots. In this chat, we discuss about the open bots history, the array of products, the future of open source RPA and much more. Let's listen in. Hello Ashish, uh, thank you for joining us today at the Bot Nirvana podcast. So, um, we'll just get started uh, Ashish today by understanding a bit more about open bots. So, sure. can you tell us a bit about the history of open bots? Absolutely. Thank you Nandan for having me over. This is really exciting uh, to be on on this channel. Um open bots uh, you know as I if you have heard is essentially uh, open source RPA. this is our attempt to make you know rpa available to everybody to use and not get tied into uh, you know complex licensing so you know open bots we started this company uh, in 2019 we we thought we'll do some stuff around you know uh, bots and and uh, services around it but very very soon you know uh, after years of experience with it doing architecture doing uh, rpa implementations doing you know digital transformations we realized that you know rpa is core to all that it's even though we tried to ignore it for some time before you know when we said we were going to do transformations we will only do apis and these things but when real practical implementations start coming in we realized rpa is is core to it right i mean sometimes uh, tactical sometimes strategic so so we took that up uh, and when we looked at options of what we can do what are the you know tools available i think what immediately stood out to us was the licensing model you know paying per bot uh, kind of does not scale well it's good to start it's good to get uh, you know uh, you know get started with some bots and some automations and things but as soon as you want to scale the program as soon as you want to really get a good roi it kind of does not work out um, you know if people are new to rpa they are fine with it as soon as program matures they realize that you know this is something that they need to get out of especially you know being implementation costs being accounted for maintenance costs being accounted for the so we decided we'll do an open source version of rpa we looked around in the market we couldn't find much uh, that was either up to date or professionally supported or actually was in in you know feature wise in co- in competition to what we what, what we wanted to achieve right or w- the tools that are there in the market so we decided to build one we took uh, some of the inspiration from the open source tools available uh, and we kind of completely changed in nuts and bolts of that and we created a new product uh, open bots you could see open bot studio and open bot server were first to come out this was early november uh, last year and that kind of took off people people appreciated what we were trying to do uh we started building out more and more features and it's now uh pretty much we released 1.3 uh, earlier this week uh, and uh, we see everybody excited about it so that's pretty much uh, the kind of journey uh, we we uh, we were hoping to have where people really start appreciating open source and we are getting that feedback <laughs> that's great to know that's great to know and we were chatting a bit about how you got started uh, with your investors so yeah. Uh, and so you're finding um, good good amount of interest in this area right that's right that's right like we have uh, you know earlier we we kind of when we started we did not have a product right we did not have anything out we did not have an install base which was typically typical of what a product company is right so we started with few ideas uh, we got a bunch of people excited about what the ideas were and once we started laying Uh, objectives and and uh, investments based based on objectives i think it started very well where we started meeting those objectives uh you know uh, earlier of course when the product is out not out there is some anxiety about it 
uh, but we were able to overcome that very very quickly and very easily you know uh, there were some you know some automations that we had done in the past and we could go ahead and uh, redo that on our platform so people were able to see that you know this is real it's not something that was just you know some some science experiment or some open source product that it just eventually go away or something like that right so we built that confidence with the investors and and possible customers uh, once we did that set out those objectives met those objectives i think then everything became much more easier so we have investors now uh, you know good uh, good loyal investors where they are ready to invest based on what we what we have common in in terms of the vision and i think we are good for now um, we do get constantly get inquiries actually the the other way now we are getting inquiries if we were looking for investors but i think with with the current ones that we have they have deep pockets and we should be good with uh, you know our current objectives that we have laid out a road map for 2021 we'll we'll see if we come up with something even larger as objectives then we will see something yeah. very good very good and you did mention earlier about the licenses and you know the fact that your licenses are free and i think that opens up a great opportunity for people to apply bots uh, where you know they don't need to be very much bothered about the business case and you know having to retrench people before they bring in bots so here is an opportunity for people to uh, bring in the innovation uh, yeah see how it works uh, and and use them for areas that it works for right? exactly exactly like of course some of the client but like clearly things that i notice today in the market is you know after we have had months of lockdown and months of notice on covid right right we still struggle with appointments for vaccines we still have those kind of issues you know the forms don't work the pages the you know the uh, code behind it does not work and things like that and it's very frustrating and and i you know i am thinking of that and and saying hey you know why could this not be done and and one of the things that come to my mind is because there is no adoption of rpa right in government and other places who could have done this far better right and even if the day that this thing started you know covid lockdowns and covid preparation started even if that day they would have decided that okay we will go with a commercial rpa to building the team around it buying a product selecting a product for any government organization or a large enterprise is not that straightforward it would have taken that time right but if open source options were available they wouldn't have struggled right they wouldn't have to go through all that uh, buying process right and at least if not the companies themselves the, the organizations that are supporting them should be able to do that so there is you know there is deeper impact of open source if it's not just about you know being able to fix a few use cases here and few business cases here and being able to do something faster it's beyond that now right Uh, so that is that is the clear uh, need that the market has on open source uh, if we look at you know majority of our prospects and clients today uh, they are large clients they already have commercial tools with them but they still want to use our you know open source rpa okay. uh, and if it was not going to be open box it would have been something else if it would have been Uh, you know vb scripts and python scripts and other scripts that they've been writing and, and working on for a long time mm -hmm. uh, but there is clearly a need or a gap where there is uh, you know the commercial tools on one side there need there is a need on the other side there is a gap in between which open source has to fill, uh, you know fulfill the sheer number of business cases people are not able to achieve because of you know total cost of ownership is is large and and is not being fulfilled yeah that's very interesting so um you've got your open bots platform which has got uh, the studio which you mentioned and i think server uh, and and i think the cloud discovery tool uh, can you tell us a bit more about all this uh, sure yeah. so we totally have about four products as of now uh, which are two are open source uh, uh, which is the studio and the server studio is of course the developer ide you go in and you create uh, automations and basically publish out you know, that automation to be run on different uh, different machines right uh, the agent is also part of the studio but if you you can install agent separately as well these are things that are run time if you want to have attended versus unattended parts and wherever you want to run it so you would run that the other part is the server which is the orchestrator 
Uh, if you have larger number of bots, you can orchestrate those centrally. You can schedule them to run on certain times. You can define the files that you need for that, the you know, queuing mechanisms, email, and those kind of things need to be centralized. Those are all part of the orchestrator and they will control the agents and, and machines and, and give you a good you know, log of what got executed, what did not, and things. Uh, so that's the server part. Uh, about the open source products, we have two products that we created, which are more around uh, uh, you know, SaaS services. So these are services that we built on top of the tools so that they can make their lives easy, people's lives easier. Um, but these are hosted SaaS services. You know, of course, there are free tiers to it, but we are also talk, talking about uh, uh, you know, uh, commercial options as well. Uh, one is the open box discovery. Discovery is essentially uh, you know, a requirements assessment and planning tool where you can go in and you know, record what is the kind of business processes you have. Then you go and do assessments on those. You, you can also further document what those processes are. Once assessment is done, you can decide whether you know, what is the kind of effort and complexity uh, that is, uh, you know, that is required to automate a particular business process. And then you can make a decision. So it's, it's essentially a tool that you would use before any automation is done or even started, right? So deciding, uh, reporting on what, what is good for, to be automated and then further going ahead and documenting. It's more also a business analysis tool. So you can, you know, upload sample documents, you can upload, uh, you know, the process flow itself, it has a small Visio like tool uh, so that you don't have to switch between tools all the time. You can do that. You can record your, uh, you know, your processes and screens and you can store all that on the on the discovery tool. And then, you know, uh, the studio and, and uh, other developers can pick it up. Um, the other product that we have, the fourth product that we have as of now is uh, OpenBots document. OpenBots document is currently in, uh, you know, private preview. It's only for select customers as of now. Um, this is an AI based, uh, you know, document processing tool. It's, it's a full, full fledged end to end intelligent document processing. You throw in a document, it'll basically uh, split that out. It's basically going to classify uh, things. We have a library, a large library of, uh, you know, pre built forms. Uh, there's also a, a ability for people to create their own forms. If not, if it's structured and if it's unstructured, they can go ahead and create the kind of data structure that they want extracted. Uh, there is a training tool built in. If you don't want to do training, there's also an option of basically uh, active learning option. So you basically go in and do human in the loop and you're going to edit the documents. Uh, once that is done, it can be fed into a bot. So uh, it's everything around document processing, being able to submit through a bot or through manual processes and then getting the process uh, output after the bot has pro or a machine has processed plus uh, what a human could come in and make corrections or make changes or whatever or approve or review the document so you could do both and then a bot can take up the pro remaining process so that's the uh, essentially the platform that is live now there are more tools that will come up in 2021 and you will see a lot more uh, you know a lot more automatability our, our ob objectives right now is to make sure you're able to get as many use cases done uh, in an enterprise and being able to get all the kind of uh, uh, automations in place yeah and that's very interesting that you are launching out with multiple capabilities uh, which even the commercial players took some time to develop you know if you look at, uh, blue prism took some time to roll out decifier decipher which is uh, which is a doc document processing but it took them like a year from <laughs> announcing it to actually rolling it yeah, out. Yeah. so it's pretty interesting that you guys are very aggressive in terms of getting out the, the releases and the products so what's the secret behind it how are you managing to roll this out so quickly i think the the biggest secret is uh, that you know our agility as of now because we are a new product we don't have uh, you know the legacy issues that we may have to support right and uh, things that we have we already started on modern platforms right we already have uh, you know ai capability the day we started we had uh, you know uh, a place to put everything that in as well and we had uh, all that capability planned um, and essentially you know uh, because we were we were new, we we had a head start, 
right? People, uh, uh, like, I, I mean, to be honest, a lot of these commercial products had to, uh, had to work towards making sure that the customers uh, understand and they build features that the customers want. We, we took a shortcut. We know exactly now what customers want. We know there is, uh, you know, ABC that is required or these features that are required to run successful automations. So we had that advantage uh, from our sense. The other thing is because we are on modern platforms, the development is fairly fast, um, you know, and, and also the other thing is we started with uh, a team which was smaller, but we now have about, you know, 28 people, 28 developers. Um, very, very quickly. So uh, the sheer number of people and also the smarts of the people, I would not like to un underestimate that. They're very, very good people. We chose them very carefully. Each of them has deep expertise in the area that we wanted them to work. And, uh, you know, the outcome, we let them do their thing and, and we got the outcome. So, uh, you know, when we are now comparing open bots to uh, any commercial tool, you know, we do Windows automation, web automation, surface automation, uh, you know, we do all sorts of orchestration. We have, uh, you know, we have vendors who are, or sorry, we have clients who are comparing us with other vendors uh, on their typical Excel sheets and we are scoring very well. I mean, um, there are hardly features that people really want uh, for real automation that we don't have. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. And how about since you're an open source um, company uh, or, you know, an open source tool, how about the community involvement? Are you do you want plan to get them more involved so that and excited so that they can also pitch in? So we already got uh, you know a lot of involvement from community. Uh, we have feedback. So there are there are two kinds of uh, community feedbacks that we are getting. One is people uh, developers coming in and saying, hey, we want this change, and the other is people who are implementing RPA are coming back and saying, hey, this you know, this, this thing that we were trying to do didn't work as expected. What, what do we do about that, right? So uh, in some cases, they were just issues. We could just tell them what to do with it, like uh, people not using the tool correctly or, uh, you know, command parameters not given correctly or described correctly from our side also. And on the other side, yes, there were genuine defects in the system that we had to uh, we fix right away. Uh, the good part about being a new product is we, we were able to get hot fixes out within a matter of a day or two, right? Not to have to wait for months and weeks. Uh, on the other side, the developers, we we already have developers who ha are submitting uh, changes to us in terms of code in the core product. Uh, we are very excited about that. So 1.4 uh, will have contributions from the community as well, which what we did right now. Um, 1.3 is what we released. 1.4 is up for release uh, next month. Uh, 1.4 will definitely include developer people, uh, you know, developer community com contributing to the code base for, from our side. So we are really, really excited to see and surprised to see where people were actually opening our code base and changing things and adding new commands and, and making uh, improvements and then sending it over to us and, and we, we being able to embrace that. That's excellent. That's excellent. So... <clears throat> You've got uh, 1.3 now, right? As you said, yep. so what's what's great about 1.3? So 1.3, I think what we wanted to make sure was that we have, uh, you know, a, a lot of support for Python. Uh, one of the things we realized is people, when they were, they did not have open bots as an option, right? Went ahead and started using uh, Python scripts and, and other things to compensate for open source. So what we were trying, what we tried to do was make sure that now you can actually take the entire uh, uh, Python scripts, package them as automations, right? So now we have ability to do two engines, our open bots engine itself in the runtime and Python engine also as a runtime. So you could put that and we will probably may have more engines eventually, uh, but we don't want to lock down people to say, no, you only use our engine. So you can use Python as the execution engine you can upload things as, as a package on the server and schedule them as any other automation. And the agent will, will actually download the Python script and execute it on your, your machine, right? So it's basically uh, being able to orchestrate uh, Python as well is one of the large changes. Um, having the ability to do uh, packages and commands, um, those are also uh, you know, part of our 1.3 release. release. So we now have a gallery. You can see a lot of uh, commands uploaded there. We continue to upload commands there. 
um, you know, we, we no more have the have that you have to have commands sent to us and develop. You could people can develop their own commands and go and publish on on the gallery. Um, you know, just like how you see uh, any other product. So that's that is something that was good. Uh, we have arguments uh, as part of our our um, execution now, so you can queue in uh, certain key, uh, certain jobs and give them certain parameters to run. Uh, and not have to really make sure that you know the bot itself understands why it is running what it is running. So it give per instance capability for uh, automations to be executed. So those are uh, larger changes. Those are you know uh, also being we made a lot of performance improvements on the on the tool, uh, making sure that it can be executed really easily. The commands load very very quickly. So those were some uh, things that we got from uh, you know from the feedback and and a lot of feedback around. Um, how the commands show up, what the commands do. So those are also part of 1.3. So a lot of exciting changes. Server side, we did uh, a newer concept called sto file storage. So now you can define uh, storage. Very soon you'll have ability to do multiple storage, uh, file storages on the server and kind of give you configurations, store some on the cloud, store some on the local server. So being able to, you know, all the issues that you see people using file shares in RPA is something that we wanted to resolve. You know, um, so essentially all the lessons we learned from automations over the years and realize the frustrations of deploying RPA in uh, you know a, a proper enterprise environment. Those are part of our requirements now. Okay, excellent, and that's very interesting to know that. Python scripts can now be used uh, on your engine directly. Yeah. So uh, people can write Python scripts and then it can be your bots. Correct. Correct. Your agent. Okay. Correct. So as part of our, you know, our team, we also have uh, a few data scientists who are doing a bunch of AI that we've, we've been writing, right? So again, th those guys always needed a way to execute these Python scripts natively, um, and especially you know things not in Windows environments and, and other things, they were they were struggling with it, right? Um, the best tools offer is you know you go in, you put in a script activity, you say it's a Python script, you point it to a Python script, and it'll run, right? Uh, it, but it's not that uh, it's not that straightforward. Uh, if you want to do if you don't want anything else and you just want your Python script to run it gets harder, right, in a distributed environment. So we wanted to get that out. We want to clear the clutter around it and say, no, you don't need our engine. All you do is just put, put those scripts, package them correctly, put them on, on the orchestrator and orchestrate them uh, like any other script, right, or any other automation. That's very interesting. Yeah. And then, yeah, as you said, it, it's very amenable to AI because a lot of AI is in Python. Correct, correct. And, and the arguments part kind of works out uh, in, in, with a natural progression. Mm -hmm. So you basically give out some parameters. Uh, all our automations are you know, executed through APIs as well. So if you wanted to do you know, basic things like make an AI-based app, you could use OpenBot server, deploy your AI scripts, mm -hmm. put those parameters, call your, call your API with using those parameters. So if you were doing, say, for example, uh, mortgage does this like loan scoring, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they basically see a bunch of parameters on the loan and then they, they you need to decide whether to give them the loan or not. So that example is is very, very easy now. You basically write a Python script to do what whatever that uh, uh, AI or machine learning part is. You throw it in and you call that through the API. It'll find an agent, run it, give you the answers back and you just dequeue those answers. So it's it's fairly straightforward to do those kind of things now. Interesting. You mentioned uh, 1.4, and you know it will have some all the developer <laughs> feedback. Uh, do you want to share more? What what 1.4? Uh, 1.4 is just under planning right now. We've started working on on it just uh, just this week. Uh, you know, I would say the largest part we want to cover in uh, 1.4 would be you know our ability to integrate with more enterprise applications. So you know, one of the things that we we have as an objective, uh, as an early preview only to you, Nandan, is that we'll we'll have support for mainframes. Uh, so one of the things that are clearly lacking in most of these RPA tools is the ability to integrate with mainframes. So now we have within the runtime, we will have ability for you to uh, you know run mainframe uh, programs and essentially 
do RPA on top of that. So um, now that we have web automation, Windows automation, surface automation, we'll also have mainframe automation. So capability wise and uh, you know the the variety of the application wise, we then cover pretty much everything. Wow, that's excellent! And thanks for that uh, exclusive preview. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like exclusive breaking news only on your channel. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so the or yeah, the, and and you know we say always say RPA is be best for legacy and mainframe is the yeah. the the legacy thing. And still we have believe it or not lots of mainframes out there. And yeah, uh, surprisingly that is still a question. Like, can I do a uh, mainframe with this? And then like in twenty twenty you wanted to do mainframe? Okay, <laughs> it's like yeah, it's not going away anywhere. So. We said, okay, let's do that and let's let's add value to the whole life cycle. Right. Yeah. So that that that's excellent. So uh, <clears throat> so I think your guys are doing pretty well. Uh, and from for an open source tool, I think this is a lot of features and a lot of things so fast. Uh, yeah. and I, how, how do you see this whole thing evolving in the open source space? I mean, you know, are you? I'm bullish about open source RPA, but yeah. I want to hear from you in terms of. Um, what you see as the advantages, uh, you did say that you know customers are comparing you with other commercial yeah. and they, you, you're matching up. So you know, A is uh, you know what where open source really shines, and where do you think it can shine more as we progress? Yeah, I I think the current uh, you know pathway for us is uh, very clear that you know all enterprise software you know our bet is our all enterprise software will eventually become saas as cloud or open source <laughs> you know uh, the the gap in between is or anything in between is going to be very very small and start getting smaller day by day mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's exactly where we are headed as well so it's going to be open source or saas right one of these options um, what we see is we are going to outshine a lot of commercial uh, uh, tools with these options right especially uh, if you see cloud like cloud is in a we we when we started open bots we were cloud native we we have all our test environments and all our dev environments already on cloud right like there's nothing uh, that we have to do specially to make things cloud compatible and things right uh, while most of the other uh, tools that you see are struggling, right? Like struggling to go on the cloud and being able to do that. That is a problem. Like people want to be able to do hybrid environments. You know, large enterprises are going away from these data centers into cloud. Now, yes, I can I spawn a bunch of VMs on, on any cloud environment, Google, AWS, or Microsoft, and, and uh, in, install RP on that. Yes, I can do that, right? But that's not platform as a service. That's not, um, you know, that's just using a bunch of VMs. It's not true deployment or true usage of cloud, right? It does not give me advantages of running things dynamically or uh, doing things for transactions and, and being able to truly scale, right? If I want to have more bots, so what am I going to do? Just go and spawn more VMs and VMs and VMs. It doesn't end, right? Those are things that have a boundary. So for vendors to now come in, commercial tools to now come in and then say they are cloud native is going to be very hard. It's, uh, it's it, this is the difference we clearly we will see with uh, you know open source versus uh, uh, commercial tools. Um, the other things that we'll see is, uh, you know, all the acquisitions these guys have made over the past so many uh, months, or oh, years actually, so many, so many of them and so many, uh, you know, tools, and it's just become uh, a, a difficult thing for them to integrate. Uh, I think they will now start integrating them and, and look at the value overall that they provide and not just, you know, a hodgepodge of tools here and there. Uh, once, so now when they are doing that, most of our features will be inbuilt to, uh, to compete with that, right? So we don't have to have that legacy or open source will not have to have that legacy of, of buying something and then being able to build on top of that. So those are advantages you will see. Uh, market is changing drastically. Most of the software is going SaaS as well. So integrating SaaS to SaaS would be far more easier than on-prem to SaaS and some of these complicated uh, things that are needed, right? I mean, you know, imagine a two-way integration with uh, with most of these tools, it becomes hard. It becomes uh, you know challenging when, when things have to go both ways. Uh, especially when uh, you know companies want to do digital transformations, 
uh, there is going to be enough competition coming from uh, the web UI front end point of view uh, to be able to integrate with, uh, with RPA. RPA doesn't do that, right? They're trying to do that now. RPA, uh, a lot of these tools are trying to be the low code platform uh, that eventually, you know, that's what eventually, eventually everybody would want. But that's, that's again, patchwork. For us, all that is native. With, with open source, all that comes out of the box. We are already API enabled. We already do web front ends. We already have uh, micro front ends. So those are things that we, uh, you know, at least most of the open source uh, initiatives I see are already doing that. And we are doing that on the open source space. So that brings in a lot of difference when, when it's about uh, the community and people who are actually trying to use it, the experience and the uh, complexity in which, you know, these environments are set up. Yeah, that, that's a very big point because, you know, you can use what people have built out in the community already. Uh, and exactly. you know, like, especially in integration, there's so many integrations that's already built out, uh, yeah. which, uh, people can use and people are not aware of it, actually. Uh, but uh, right. once people come to know about how much uh, more you can do with the open source tools, and especially the fact that it's not proprietary, right? Like if you are stuck with a commercial yeah. tool, it's all proprietary stuff, which you don't know how to manage yeah. and you know, how yeah. to connect. So yeah, I think there is a distinct advantage uh, with open source, uh, and uh, you know, I think uh, hopefully you know it, it's uh, more and more uh, clients start embracing it. Uh, I see you guys are come up. Uh, Robocorp is there, yeah, and RPA uh, and Tag are all coming up pretty well. Uh, so I, I see that developing quite a bit. So I just want to switch track a bit and ask you about you know, people looking to start with open bots. Yeah. Uh, I know they can go and download it, uh, but you know, and, and you guys have, have, as I understand, built on .NET and- um, That's right, C Sharp, .NET. C Sharp and .NET. But do you, people coming in, do they need to know any of this? Do they need any prerequisite and, or they can just download and get started? How do you get started? So two easy ways. One is of course, go in, go on the website, just download it, it's free and open source. We don't ask for, uh, any any credit cards or any any uh, details, so you can just go ahead and download that. Once you have downloaded, you can play around with it. Or there is an academy. If you go on the website, uh, there's a we provide the basic courses for free. Uh, uh, that's all we have right now. All our courses are free actually and certification. We don't uh, charge for that. There is uh, a step by step uh, training for that. Um, you know, if you go through the training module, you basically go through exactly how to use the studio, how do you actually create automations and those things. So those are already available, take some time, go through the academy, um, you know, and, and every time we release some things, we basically also give out on the blog what the feature is and uh, what the capabilities are, if there is something that you specifically want. Uh, there's enough documentation, every, uh, you know, command has a documentation on gallery, you can go in and look at what each parameter is, what, what, what does it do, what you know what does it expect so all that is there um if you are uh, a developer that has never developed any rpa or automations then we would expect that you know you know a little bit about programming and and some c sharp just because you know variables and typing and those kind of things are uh, are helpful uh, but otherwise it's mostly drag and drop uh, and being able to give the right parameters uh, if you have already done any RPA automation uh, in any of the platforms, you will find it, you know, very, very familiar. Uh, the concepts are similar. It's not deviating from the mainstream RPA uh, that you see. Uh, yes, there are some nuances that we have based on, uh, you know, advanced capabilities that we provide. Uh, but overall, if you, you know what an automation is, what an automation is supposed to do, how does it run, where does it run, and how, how, how things are, um, and how logic flows and, and how, you know, you do try catches and those kind of things, then it's easier for you to adapt the tool. You should be able to go, uh, get, you know, get off the ground in about a day or two maximum, I would say. I can be biased in that, but yes, that's what I think. <laughs> so no prerequisites. And what did you tell about the certification? That's also free? Yes, both uh, the, the training and certification is free. Uh, anybody, we already have a lot of people who have completed the trainings and certification. Um, so yeah, the academy is totally free. You just log in, go through the training, 
once you finish the training, you can start with the certification. Um, you know, the certification requires you to make sure that you, you read up on the tool uh, and do basic stuff. Once you do that and go through the certification, it should be fairly fast. Okay, very good, very good. So, you know, there's one standard question I asked toward the end of the podcast with everyone, being an industry leader, uh, what do you think, where do you think um, intelligent automation or, you know, the whole software automation space is going uh, in, in the next three years, right? And, and, and it's very exciting times. Uh, and, you know, it's, uh, I think it, it's, it can do a lot for, for humanity itself. But yeah. what do you think? I think commercially, it's, it's going to do a lot. I agree. Uh, you know, as I was saying, from trends wise, I, I think open source is definitely a trend that will catch up in 2021. Uh, you know, we will become somebody's pain in their backside very, very soon uh, and, and uh, kind of try, uh, try to turn the tide around how licensing needs to be. Uh, but I think uh, other than just the open source wave, I think we will definitely see a cloud wave. We'll definitely see ability for people to be able to orchestrate from cloud, you know, uh, also host agents on cloud, things that don't require, uh, you know, confidential information for large organization can definitely be there, but small organizations would be able to, you know, go on cloud right away. Just, uh, you know, RPA has to become like Salesforce uh, if we want to see that kind of adoption, right? So that's, that is part. Uh, in AI, I would definitely say document processing will be uh, part of 2021 20, uh, onwards, where people have now realized that, you know, documents are a, a core part of most organizations. Uh, you know, they have done enough to uh, enough of uh, creation of forms and documents and, and contracts and things that, uh, you know, that will require uh, document processing. These are trends, definitely. Additionally, some people may do AI. I don't see many organizations doing AI uh, as a platform, using the platform to do AI uh, right away in 2021, just, just because I think the sheer number of automations that have already been done, the, the use cases are, are still fairly small, very, very small. Uh, the market potential is still not even, you know, uh, I would say scratch the surface of it. So once we see that adoption there, that is when people will come to, uh, you know, more complex decision making to be done by AI or more things to be done by AI. Um, definitely, we see, uh, you know, the the BPM features, low code features coming in into RPA, uh, API features coming in into RPA, those would be feature building, um, you know, there'll be very soon we'll see apps being created on purely on RPA platform. Right, not uh, not on different platforms and then integrate with RPA, but RPA itself will have ability to do, uh, you know, at least small Excel and access like apps. Some, uh, not uh, maybe not large, large someday, but at least those small apps, uh, you know, two three forms uh, asking for information and submission and going through uh, human loop and those kind of things. So those are things that we see 2021 trends picking up. Um, beyond that, uh, there's a lot of other hype that will happen, but I don't think, uh, you know, that, that is going to go anywhere, especially given the sheer number of automations that are yet in the queue of people to, to do something about it. Okay. Okay. Great, great, great. Yeah. So a lot of, I think a lot of basic stuff to come, uh, yeah. and, uh, you know, we'll build on it as, while there's a lot of hyper automations and hype. Yeah hyping up that's going on. I think the key is the basics. I think, as you said, the use, the, the people using automation itself is pretty low and there's the, the yeah, yeah. I mean, the people can come up with hype as much as they want. And if, the problem is now that every commercial tool ha vendor has a good marketing uh, uh, dollars and marketing team, the, the hype is going to get created. But if you look at how many use cases people have actually done and how many are really pending, the, the actual stuff is still not, not even achieved. Like in, let's first do the dumb automations and then we can come to the intelligent automation. Exactly. exactly. Still 80% of the data is still in documents. So that's probably exactly. that's the place to start. Uh, yep. so on, on that note, uh, Ashish, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great conversation. Uh, and I truly wish you the best. I, I do wish open bots the best and even the open source RPA the very best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sundan. Thank you for all the support that the community has given and you as well. Thank you. 
Thank you for joining the Bot Nirvana podcast. Appreciate if you can leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Catch the show notes on botnirvana.org. While you are there, feel free to explore more automation ideas, tutorials, tools and more. See you next time.